Hey what's up, Serpentine here taking a look at the military vehicle sim Armored Warfare, developed by Obsidian Entertainment, same guys behind Skyforge and Pillars of Eternity. Armored Warfare takes the extremely popular gameplay of World of Tanks, but trades up from World War II era vehicles of war to the vehicles of today while also offering a PvE mode. If you've ever played World of Tanks or even perhaps War Thunder's Ground Forces, you'll feel very at home playing Armored Warfare. From the menus, matchmaking tiers, consumables, purchasable ammo, to hiding in bushes and the main domination game mode, almost everything about Armored Warfare has been copied over from World of Tanks. The general gameplay of Armored Warfare has two teams of 11 tanks either converging on an objective in the middle of the map or travelling all the way to their opponent's base to capture it. The different types of tanks provide the standard kind of setup with fast, low fire powered APCs acting as scouts, main battle tanks bringing in the big guns and armour, and artillery to coax out any enemies in hiding or just camping from afar. There are a couple of outlier classes but these other vehicles are just various combinations of the previously mentioned roles. There is one vehicle type that is different from the rest in the form of the artillery vehicles that give you a top down look of the map while firing. Positioning of this vehicle is extremely important as it can easily have its line of sight broken by hills, buildings and other structures, rendering your shots useless, not to mention that if an APC or tank destroyer charges you, you're pretty much dead. There are also certain vehicles that have extra activatable abilities like a designate target for APCs that tags an enemy vehicle for extra damage, and ECU override for light tanks that drastically speeds up their movement. The different vehicle types also have varying armour thicknesses, which plays an extremely important role in the game as there is a ton of different ammunition types including armour penetrating rounds, heat rounds and explosive rounds, with different types of ammo able to be used by your tank in one game. With the tiered tank system in the game you have a pretty good chance of penetrating the armour of tanks in your tier. However, the matchmaking puts you together with people from various tier rankings, and if you're on the lower end, it'll be pretty hard to get any shots off that actually penetrate an enemy's armour. There are weak points in armour that you can find by moving your reticule over a tank's hull until it turns orange or green, indicating that if the shot is accurate, you'll penetrate the armour and deal damage. Alternatively, if you are going up against a main battle tank with no real penetration points, you can still be of use by aiming for its tracks and disabling its movement, at least until it auto repairs. There are other parts of the tank and its crew you can damage that will reduce the performance of it, but are a lot harder to damage significantly compared to its track. Out on the battlefield, almost everything is destructible except for large buildings and structures. If it's only one story high, it's more than likely you can just drive straight through it. As an added bonus piece of visual information, you can also see which part of your tank is covered by environmental objects via the grey lines surrounding your tank in the bottom left, which can be useful if you are behind a small piece of cover and want to make sure no part of your tank is hanging out. For people playing stealthy spotting classes or artillery support, there is also a cover mechanic that will prevent enemies spotting you. By stopping your tank behind or in foliage, your cover meter will go up, indicated by the bottom left meter. Being hidden only works while stopped and not firing. As soon as you do either, the enemy will be able to see you, especially if you fire. While this feature may sound like it encourages bush camping, something World of Tanks is somewhat infamous for, Armored Warfare's map design providing no real open battlefields means you can't really do it. Instead, the maps encourage a slow pushing playstyle. The different map settings vary quite significantly too, with you fighting in the snow and ice on relatively flat land, then fighting on a tropical island in rough hilly terrain. While the PvP battle mode will be where most players go to play in Armored Warfare, there is also a co-op mission mode that will have four players taking on AI tanks while they try to complete certain objectives. Enemy tanks are a little weaker than player controlled tanks, so they're easy to take down. However, they make up for their weakness by sending a lot of them your way, so you can be overwhelmed if not working together with your teammate. Outside of the main game, you have two different factions to the game with their own unique vehicles. I would advise choosing one of them from the beginning as there is a fair grind to get the higher tiered vehicles unlocked. Unlocking a new vehicle has it at its bare basics requiring you to earn experience with it to unlock its full potential, with speed, ammunition, armour, and other types of upgrades. 
Your vehicles also have a commander and crew that can level, allowing them to gain small bonuses to its performance like faster reloading, faster speed and better accuracy. Bonus experience gained, money earned, the cost of equipment and more can also be increased via your base by building and upgrading certain buildings. You earn resources for these buildings daily and the bonuses given can eventually be quite significant. Other features of the game include a guild system called a battalion that offers members some bonus rewards at the end of games. You can also customise your tanks with decals and camos and this is where the game will be aiming its free to play model along with the premium subscription that increases your end game rewards by 50%. For those that want to speed up their progress and play in the higher tiered games, you can purchase premium vehicles that you can see here on the left in yellow that are slightly less powerful than the vehicles you have to work towards. Consumables can be purchased with the in-game currency but is honestly not really needed unless you really want to get absolutely every little bit of performance out of your vehicle, as they are only around 5-10% to bonuses. Similarly, you can add retrofits to your vehicle that add around the same kind of percentage bonuses. Altogether, Armored Warfare is basically a modernised world of tanks, both in terms of its graphics and its available vehicle lineup. The map design has almost completely eliminated the whole camping in a bush strategy, while still having a hiding mechanic for the support vehicles to take advantage of. The game leans on the arcade side of things rather than the realistic, something that I feel War Thunder does a little bit better especially with their collision meshes. If you liked World of Tanks, then Armored Warfare is an easy transition to make and a nice step up graphically. If you're expecting anything new or innovative to the formula, you may be disappointed as the game follows it pretty much to the T. Anyway, that's been my player preview for Armored Warfare. The game is currently in open beta with no official release date. If you want to find out more about the game, check out the links below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.